Last time we looked at the Maztec MS8910 and the Xtech RC100. Now it's time to continue on with the uh, Global Specialties LCR58, which is a much more sophisticated device. This is a full LCR device. It has inductance, capacitance, resistance. It will uh, test in serial and parallel mode. On inductance, it'll do uh, QR. It will also measure uh, DCR, so you can get the uh, resistance of the inductor at a given frequency. It has measurement frequencies of like uh, what 100 hertz, 120 hertz, 1 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz. Uh, pretty good uh, range of features. It has a diode check. I'll have to see how thorough that is. Uh, one of the differences is that is this is a 6 volt device and that it uses two 3 volt batteries but gives pretty good performance and it has a hard power switch on the end but it still has an auto power off capability so that's kinda nice. I like when a device has a hard power off switch uh, that way the batteries don't drain out as nearly as quickly. This little guy is a pretty complete unit. In fact it has uh, a lot of the features that you'd find in a more of a full-sized LCR like the uh, IET's uh, DE5000. So we'll take a look at that and compare the results. So let's run through the uh, inductor values here and see what um, the IET says uh, for it. Uh, on the 47 micro Henry, we're showing 55. This is a test frequency of 10 kilohertz, by the way. We're showing 55 and a Q factor of 312. And on the 15 micro Henry, we're showing 14.79 with a Q of 1954, so 1 1.9. And on the uh, little 4.7 micro Henry, we're showing oops at 10 kilohertz we're showing a value of 4 and a Q of 1.4 let's see how that measures up on the LCR 58 I don't see a way of getting this all on screen at once so we'll go with the values uh, with the uh, starting with the large inductor we're showing 55.4 and a Q factor of 312 which very close. For the 15 micro Henry, we're showing 14.6 and a 1.95 Q factor. And finally, the 4.7 is showing up as 3.9. I think the IET had it as 4.02 or something. And a 1.38, 1.40 Q factor. So 1.4. Pretty good. I think that works out very close to the IET values. That's a pleasant surprise. So for capacitance, the IET with a, at a frequency of 10 kilohertz shows the, the listed 22 microfarad capacitor at 16 micro sorry at 16 microfarads and a dissipation of 0.027. 100 nanofarad shows up as 96.7 and a dissipation of 0.015. And finally, the little 22 puff is showing as. 24.2 with a 0 .004 dissipation. Let's see how that matches up. LCR58 again at 10 kilohertz testing frequency. And on the 22 microfarad, well, that's what it's marked. It's showing uh, about 16 microfarads. So again, right on the IET. And a 0 .03 dissipation. 100 nanofarad shows as 92.5 with a 0 0.02 dissipation. And finally, the little 22 PF is showing as 22.6. And we're unable, at least in parallel, yeah, in parallel mode, we're not able to measure the uh, dissipation factor. Now let's test out the DC resistance. The 100 ohm resistor is showing up as 100 or 99.9. 1K showing up as a nice even 1K. 10K showing up as exactly 10K. And 100K, yep, 100K or 100.1. Very good. So resistance testing is very fast, very responsive, much better than the uh, RC100 was. So let's try out the uh, LCR58 and see how its uh, resistance measures out. 
for the 47 microhenry, we're showing 1.13 ohms, and according to the data sheet, it should be 1.235, so that's pretty close. I'm also measuring at 10 kilohertz, and they might have spected at 100 on that one. Uh, let's see, the 15 microhenry is showing as 430, four, sorry, 470, there we go, got a good hit. 470, and that is rated at 470 milliohms. And now let's try the small 4.7 microhenry. And it's showing 0.17 ohms. And again, that's rated at uh, 170 milliohms. So right on the money. So again, another uh, pretty good feature, and it seems to be accurate. That's great. So uh, one of the tests was whether the tips were magnetic. Uh, let's let's just try a simple test and see. Here we have a magnetic hook. Oh yeah, these can easily be magnetized. And it's not just the screws, the very tip is quite easily magnetized. That's too bad. I was hoping that uh, these would do a little bit better than that because they seem to be pretty well made. Next up we need to test the diode readings. Let's try the red LED, see if we get it to glow at all. Yep, the red LED glows, and we're showing 1.559 volts. And I think that's pretty close to its rating. Let's try out the green LED, and it doesn't glow. No, it doesn't glow, and I don't get any reading either. So, whatever voltage it's testing with, it's just not working for a green LED. So what voltage does it test at? Looks like 2.0. That should be enough to, I would think, to get the uh, green LED uh, to do a voltage drop across it, but maybe not quite enough. Three volts might be a required, really, to, to get the voltage drop of 1.8 across that LED and then uh, be able to measure it. Too bad. I was hoping that feature would work just a little better. So overall, I really like this little guy. The LCR58 uh, works pretty well. Um, the tips actually uh, grip much better. They are, as you can see here in this shot, they flatten out just a little bit at the tip, and that makes it a lot easier to grab a component. Uh, so definitely a winner, except for maybe the magnetized tips and the limited diode test capability. Huh. Well, I had just finished shooting everything, and uh, the post arrived in, on uh, Sunday, and so we've got something special in here that I really wasn't expecting for a while. Awesome! A set of smart tweezers, fresh from uh, Canada, and where they're made. And these are going to be similar to the LCR58, but probably with uh, more capabilities. And I think this will deserve its own video. So that'll be, that'll be next. So there will be a part three to the Smart Tweezers reviews. Thanks for watching.